Here is serum albumin. Serum albumin is a protein found in the plasma of blood. It constitutes 55% of the protein in blood, so it's the most commonly occurring protein. Serum albumin serves the functions of regulating blood pressure to avoid leakage of blood into surrounding tissue. And one of its major functions is the transport of hydrophobic chemicals through the blood system. Hydrophobic chemicals being chemicals that would not ordinarily mix with blood. It transports chemicals inside its alpha helix bundles, which, of which there are six within the serum albumin. If we now look at the structure of serum albumin, if we take the first bundle here, shown in red, we can see it has a motive of up, down, up, followed by a loop. The loop leads to the yellow bundle here, which is orientated at 90 degrees to the red bundle. So if we rotate the um, protein through 90 degrees, so that we're looking down on the red bundle, we can see the red bundle now we're looking down on it and inside you can see the hydrophobic substances bound. We can see that the yellow alpha bundle has an up down up structure too and when we rotate through a further 90 degrees we can then see the next bundle. There we go. So we've rotated through another 90 degrees you can see what's inside the alpha helix bundle here are uh, an, an, another large group of chemicals bound. Uh, the next bundle has an up, down, up structure, again followed by this long loop. And again when we rotate through 90 degrees, this reveals the um, hydrophobic substances within this bundle. Um, this bundle leads to this darker green bundle here which has an up, down and up structure to this point and again if we rotate for 90 degrees so that we're looking down on this bundle there we go so we're looking down on this bundle here now you can see that within the alpha helixes again we have a large number of uh, chemicals bound and then we have the next alpha helixes which is up, down, up and a long loop and again if we rotate through 90 degrees we can see looking down on it from above all the, alpha, all the uh, hydrophobic substances bound inside and finally if we go to the next alpha helix which is here which is it goes up down and up and again if we rotate this through 90 degrees so we're looking down on it makes it a bit easier to see you can see that inside we have um, substances being bound to so in summary serum albumin consists of several alpha helix bundles all of them orientated at 90 degrees to their adjacent bundle. In this way, alpha helixes um, bundles are open and rotated at all angles, which means that ligands approaching from any angle will find it easier to bind with the serum albumin, uh, which makes our serum albumin ideal for transporting ligands around the blood system. Um, for this reason, serum albumin has earned itself the nickname of the taxi of the blood. Now, what we're going to do is look at the nucleotide sequence. Sorry, not the nucleotide, but the amino acid sequence of serum albumin. Uh, serum albumin consists of 585 amino acids. Um, it also contain, is characterized by having many, many 
disulfide bonds. In fact, there are 17 disulfide bonds between the cysteine or cysteine um, amino acids in this sequence. Out of curiosity, I decided to enter a line break after each cystine to see if any pattern would emerge. So I created this bit of software and when I click on C break, it enters a line break after each cystine. What then appears is a regular pattern. Um, as you can see, we have each line ending with a letter C and um, the double C results in getting a single line, a single C on its own here. So we have one line, two line, three lines, single C, 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 one line, two line, three lines, single C. Now I also counted the number of amino acids in each line and here for example you have 10 amino acids, 23, 44. Now if we go down three sections, that's one, two, three, we then find that we have 10, 27, 44, which is quite similar to 10, 23, 44. If we go down a further three sections, so that's one, two, three, we then find that we have 10, 27, 44, which is the same as 10, 27, 44. Taking another example, if we take this section here, 8, 23, 45, and go down three sections, so that's 1, 2, 3, we end up with here 8, 23, 45, which is the same as 8, 23, 45. So we find that we have a repeating cycle of three sections. So in summary, serum albumin, which consists of 30 alpha helixes, has an internal structure which is partitioned by the cysteines into 27 or 3 times 3 times 3 lines. These lines themselves are partitioned by the double C, that's the double cysteine, into 9 sections each of three lines. So the 27 lines partition, are partitioned naturally into nine sections each of three lines and these nine sections are partitioned naturally into three cycles each of three sections. Um, so the serum albumin has a structure which is very much centered on the number three and as we saw previously the alpha helix bundles seem to have a one, two, three loop structure. This brings to an end my short presentation on serum albumin. I hope you enjoyed it.